In 1949, the Air Research and Development Command issued a study for the development of a supersonic long-range bomber. Some officials were very interested in a supersonic bomber, others were more skeptical. Several contractors were interested in a future development contract. The initial proposal from Convair was for a two-seat, delta-wing bomber powered by three turbojet engines. The design housed weapons and most of the fuel in a large external pod, to reduce the size of the aircraft. In 1951, the Convair design was revised. One engine was removed, and the two remaining got increased thrust output. A third crew member was also added. In August 1952, Convair's design was determined to be superior to the competition, and it was chosen for continued development. The aircraft was formally designated the B-58. The first flight of the B-58 took place November 11, 1956. The prototype exceeded Mach 1 in December the same year. The B-58 Hustler had a large delta wing, and was powered by four General Electric J-79 GE-1 turbojet engines. It proved to be very suitable for low-altitude high-speed flight. Many features of the B-58 were record-breaking. The aircraft was very light for its time, and the wings were extremely thin. The engines had many new unique features, and among other things had moving conical spikes in the inlets to maximize the air intake at different speeds. The B-58 had a crew of three, pilot, a navigator, who was also bombardier, and a defense systems operator. They were seated in separated tandem cockpits. In later versions of the B-58, each crew member had an ejection capsule, making it possible to eject from the aircraft in speeds up to Mach 2. The electronic controls of the aircraft was advanced for the time. The aircraft even had automatic voice messages and warnings. Performance and design were unique for the time period, but the B-58 was not an easy aircraft to fly. This was due to the delta wing design. There was also an issue of fuel stacking, when the B-58 accelerated or decelerated the fuel moved within the tanks, changing the center of gravity of the aircraft. On August 1, 1960, the B-58 was declared operational. It soon proved itself superior to the Boeing B-47 Stratojet and the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress in the annual SAC combat competition. New pilots used the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger as a conversion trainer, before they moved on to the TB-58A trainer version of the Hustler. The B-58 was challenging to fly, but performed exceptionally. But it had a more limited range than the B-52, and was very expensive. Because of the complexity, the B-58 required a lot of maintenance. The operation and maintenance costs of the B-58 was considerably higher than for other bombers. The B-58 also had a high accident rate. 26 aircraft were lost in accidents, almost a quarter of the total number of B-58s produced. It also needed an excessive number of aerial refuelings to complete a mission. By the time the B-58 entered service, Soviet high-altitude surface-to-air missiles became a threat. To avoid this threat, the B-58 needed to operate at low altitudes, which led to sub-supersonic speeds and an even more limited range. In 1965, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara ordered the retirement of the B-58 by 1970 because of the high cost. The last B-58s were retired January 31, 1970. The retired B-58 fleet was kept in storage until 1977, when it was disposed of. The B-58 was replaced by the FB-111A. Several of the B-58 pilots were selected to fly the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, due to their experience of long-duration supersonic flight. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel.